Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The extreme conditions of polar regions provide the perfect proving ground for naval technology. To strengthen Arctic-specific capabilities, equipment, and procedures, the U.S. Navy established the ICE Exercises, or ICEX. This five-week biennial event allows the Navy to evaluate its operational readiness and technical proficiency in the Arctic environment. Participating nations include Canada, the United Kingdom, and Norway, alongside the Arctic Submarine Laboratory, which oversees testing and research. A key part of ISAX is the submarine operations phase, during which submarines practice navigating confined areas and breaking through ice. Successfully surfacing requires precise coordination between navigation and engineering teams, who assess ice thickness, weather patterns, and potential hazards before executing the maneuver. For a submarine to surface through ice, it requires various systems and the expertise of the crew. For starters, uh, submarines need to know the thickness of the ice cover for tactical purposes. They also need to know them for safety purposes. A submarine needs to surface um, if it's in trouble, so it needs to know where the thin ice lays. And submarines also play a role, in addition to an operational standpoint, they also play a role scientifically. In a process called static loading, compressed air pushes water out of the ballast tanks to increase the submarine's buoyancy until the upward force cracks the ice. Impact! Initially, this method proceeds a few inches per minute, but accelerates once the ice has weakened. The ascent is aided using sonar and visual observations to monitor the ice thickness. In some cases, when the ice is strong enough, the submarine might use instruments like an ice-breaking mast in addition to its coning tower to break through. This capability is carried out by various types of submarines, from attack subs to ballistic missile submarines. Further than just submarines, Arctic missions also rely on vessels such as powerful icebreakers. The U.S. Coast Guard uses their two operational icebreakers, the Polar Star and the Healy, to navigate and break through the icy polar waters. The latter is the only icebreaker dedicated to scientific research in the Arctic. which has approximately a group of 30 scientists and more than 100 crew members focused on studying the Arctic Ocean dynamics. We uh, provide access, reliable access, to researchers with uh, the large amount of laboratory space on board and the ability to bring up to 50 scientists from uh, around the world. Our diversity and uh, reliability makes Healy a capable platform. 
In 2023, the Healy deployed in support of two scientific missions, one in support of the Office of Naval Research. The second mission we did was in support of the Nansen and Amundsen Basin Observation System. That water sampling looked at understanding how the water flowing in from the Atlantic Ocean is changing the ice cap and how that can impact the climate in the rest of the world. The icebreakers depend on the design of their hull. So the ice that breaks at the front doesn't accumulate, but is redirected below the vessel. Thanks to this, the icebreaker can navigate safely through the Arctic waters and leave a path for other ships, with a higher risk of getting damaged by the ice. During Arctic deployments, dive teams are used to do inspection labor to the hull of the icebreakers. Assessing damage or risks in areas that are difficult to reach. These experts must be highly trained due to the conditions that surround them. Extreme cold and poor visibility make the inspections, hole cleaning, or even sample taking for scientific purposes challenging. Developing skills in glacial environments also includes aerial and ground tasks. Because of this, some exercises focus on these areas, such as the Arctic Pegasus. This operation mainly targeted Arctic mobility and survivability in cold and extreme conditions. Arctic Pegasus also served as a rehearsal for U.S. Army Alaska. As part of the exercise, supply drops are coordinated by the Army and Air Force. Effectiveness is what defines the Spartan paratroopers during the Arctic warrior exercises. These exercises incorporate airborne and situational training operations in the deep Alaskan winter. The paratroopers must show their ability to deploy quickly, operate in harsh conditions, and focus on teamwork. Usually, the troops are dropped from a C-17 and, during descent, must consider the scarcity of safe landing zones and quick variations in the climate. Doing this kind of exercise regularly allows for testing and validating protocols regarding winter field training and refining the tactics and techniques that must be implemented in Arctic warfare. Rapid deployments are vital in the Arctic as the harsh conditions near the pole require every action to be effective and precise. The LC-130 Hercules plays an important role in this kind of mission. This aircraft is equipped with de-icing systems that enable the plane to perform in extremely cold temperatures. For the troops to be able to mobilize quickly in the snow, the plane can also deliver snowmobiles directly to the areas without the need for landing strips. This expands the reach of operations for the soldiers into remote locations. Delivering snowmobiles into those locations 
can support and enhance the reconnaissance, search, rescue, resupply, and observation tasks for the troops. The speed of such vehicles allows the soldiers to move across vast distances in a short time. Medical personnel can deal with injuries concerning paratroopers jumping into Arctic and sub-Arctic conditions much faster and efficiently. During the 1950s, an intercontinental mission called Deep Freeze took place in Antarctica, supporting the National Science Foundation. These continuous operations were located in one of the coldest and most harsh environments on Earth. In the austral winter, the South Pole Station in Antarctica has an average temperature of negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Even in such conditions, this mission has continued to this day since 1955. The United States military has coordinated it to resupply the U.S. Antarctic Program research stations in Antarctica. Using airplanes like the Lockheed LC-130 is vital to ensure a successful operation in Antarctica. This aircraft is a specially modified version of the C-130 for extreme cold environments, like the South Pole. Its most notable feature is the use of skis instead of wheels for landing and takeoff due to the snow and ice runways. Other important features are ones shared with the original model, consisting of anti-skid systems, reduced engine power, and the capacity to get steep climb angles to clear obstacles. Such modifications allow the plane to carry out its main mission, which is supporting scientific teams by transporting cargo and personnel from the McMurdo Station to field stations and camps. Supporting scientific missions in freezing environments is part of the tasks of the U.S. military. Such is the case with the Air National Guard supporting the National Science Foundation at the North Greenland Iman Ice Drilling Station. Inside those stations, ice cores are drilled either in glaciers or ice sheets. These cores can provide detailed climate records as they can track gases or other impurities that might hint at the events that occurred at that precise moment. Using specialized aircraft like the LC-130, the National Guard can provide the station with the necessary equipment to carry out these scientific procedures. Those tools can include thermal drills, electromechanical drills, or hand augers. Just as with Arctic operations, in Antarctica, specialized dive teams from the Coast Guard are deployed to engage in several tasks. Their purpose is usually linked with ship inspections by monitoring the integrity of ship holes. Scientific research with data collection or search and rescue emergency cases. They're aided by several tools that help them overcome the environmental challenges present in the Antarctic Ocean.
Exercises in extremely cold environments refine essential survival skills for the troops, while winter warfare tactics, emergency procedures, and medical tasks are developed. Ultimately, these exercises contribute to successful missions in these critical regions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.